What up, though? I'm your boy, King Richard, a.k.a. the God of Rep from Creative Minds Entertainment. It's KME, if you don't know, I swear you know now, baby. Marriage, uh, the M-word. The M-word that seems to get thrown around the world, just thrown out so lightly and just so casually. No one cares about it. Or do they? Is it a holy thing? Is it a spiritual thing? Or is it a legal binding contract? All of those could suffice as answers. But I noticed that a lot of women, when it comes to marriage, find a way to try to conflate two completely different ideas and opinions and put those together and run with it. Now, what am I talking about? I'm talking about sex and marriage. And throw it in there, religion. Now, me personally, once again, I am not religious. I am a former Christian. But I obviously don't believe in religion. I have my preferences and my reasons as to why. We can talk about that on another video. I actually did on another video. But a lot of people like to put all that in one bag and just shake that bag up and say all of this stuff goes together. And a lot of times it doesn't go together. Continuously, but heads. And I noticed in this particular clip that I'm about to show you, you'll find out exactly why I believe that. Because this woman is about to talk about sexuality in religion and use her past problem or trauma to justify her present actions. Let's watch the video. So I was kind of like taken aback by it because I've actually been like in my mind thinking about that a lot only because I look at sex from a negative lens kind of. I could say God is healing me from that because of my past. And I want to give you all some revelation that I just got from yesterday. So a lot of us grew up being very promiscuous. If you did not grow up that way, bless you, you saved yourself from so much damage. Virgins are cheering right now. I knew it. <laughs> oh man, let's keep watching. But because I grew up like that, when I got into a relationship that was actually a real relationship and now my marriage, I realized that because God took away my desire for promiscuity and all that stuff that I didn't have a desire anymore even like for my husband. And although my husband and I would have sex, it was like really hard for me. I really had to push myself to go there. And it was like an internal battle I fought because I felt so bad. I'm like, am I not attracted to my husband? Like, why don't I want to have sex? Yada, yada, yada. And I would have this conversation with God all the time in my head and never talk to my husband about it. So yesterday I'm sitting in there and I'm just like, I can't believe God is answering this prayer for me right now. So here was the one that stood out to me the most. Mm -hmm. Wow. And shout out to Suzette, you know what I'm saying? Great podcaster for bringing that content to our awareness. Um, I ain't gonna hold you too long. One thing I have to get to what she said in that video is a lot of us grew up promiscuous. No, 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 no. A lot of us did not grow up promiscuous. You grew up promiscuous. You grew up being for the streets, for the streets. And everyone can change and everyone deserves a lane or opportunity to change, right? Obviously, she's married now. She's no longer. So she has changed, right? But what I don't like is she keeps bringing God into the fold of why she's making these decisions. No accountability whatsoever. And obviously the husband is not doing it for her. It sounds like to me she's not into the husband on a physical level, in an intimate level. And she's finding a way to steer that blame away from herself, right? And so she's saying, well, a lot of us were grew up promiscuous. If you didn't, well, you were blessed and you were lucky and, and all that. And it's like, most people actually don't grow up and be for the streets. Especially men. A lot of men don't grow up and be for the streets. The average man doesn't have those options. Most men are lucky if they have five sexual partners from the age of 18 to 30. Most men are lucky if they have five sexual partners, up to five sexual partners from 18 to 30. So most men are not actually for the streets, right? Now on the women's side, nah, you can make an argument for that in certain areas, certain communities, certain places, right? But then the second point that really drove me crazy is her blaming her lack of desire for her husband on God or religion. 
saying, oh, he took that from me, you know, when I was no longer perverted and, and programmed to, to be hypersexual. I've experienced this in my own life. It's gotta be one of the worst things in the world. You were giving away the cookie freely before I met you, right? To anybody, didn't care. But the minute that you get somebody that actually cares about your soul, your body, your mind and everything, you're rationing out the cookie. Where does that make sense in your mind in any fact? That has nothing to do with religion. Nothing to do with religion. And once again, I'm not harping on beating down on faith-based organizations or communities. This has little to do with religion. That's your personal choice and personal preference. Just because I don't support it does not mean somebody else. I'm mad at someone else for supporting it or having it as their lifestyle. What I'm talking about is the accountability part. I don't hear any accountability in this woman. I would like to insinuate that the reason why I don't want to have sex anymore like that, I don't want to be hot with my husband, I don't want to be hot with my wife, I don't want to be a freak, if you will, is because, well, God took that desire away from me. What? And then to insinuate or say that um, sex is supposed to only be for marriage. That's, once again, your personal opinion. I'm married and I still don't feel that way. Sex is, is supposed to be whatever you want it to be between you and another consenting adult or adults, multiple. Whatever y'all consent to sexually in the privacy of your home or wherever, that's on y'all. You have that personal choice and you should exercise that choice at your discretion. It almost makes sense. And to a lot of women that are listening to your comment, they're like, yep, I can identify, yep, mm -hmm, I agree. Yeah, I was like that once. But why are you making your present husband, your present gift from God, your answer to all your prayers, why are you making him pay? Because you have a problem pair bonding. You were not um, careful or selective with the sexual partners that you had. Why does he have to pay for that? This is the one thing I don't understand is why do men have to pay for the trauma that you have. Why do we have to pay for it? The good men, I mean. I'm not talking about the bad men because they get off scot-free. The good men always have to pay for the trauma of you not being selective with your body. Your husband should get it whenever, however, wherever. If he's a good husband, obviously in this particular case, he must be because she didn't say he wasn't. But they're having intimacy problems strictly because of her. And that's why I said, don't say sex is better out. It's only good inside the marriage because there are a lot of sexless marriages out there and they end in divorce. It's a lot of women out there that are holding the cookie back from their own husband, but the guy who didn't have to put any work in, he got it for free easily. That's on you.